there, my name is Maria Lewis. I'm an assistant curator here at Australia's National Film Museum, ACME, and I'm the person behind this Yeah The Girls program, which looks at how Australian perspectives have reshaped the traditional Hollywood rom-com. And one of the key films that does this, of course, is Top End Wedding. And I'm so chuffed to introduce one of the film stars, Sherry Sevens. Sherry, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you play my personal favorite character from the film, the hilarious Ronell. Um, and I want to chat about some of the specifics of that in a minute. But firstly, your debut film role was in The Sapphires, which was directed by Wayne Blair and also co-starred Miranda Tapsell as one of the girls alongside you. What was it like almost a full decade later to retain with not only Wayne, who of course directs Top End Wedding, but to reteam with Miranda as well, who's now not only acting alongside you, but the, the writer and producer as well. It was incredible. It was so like, it, it absolutely had all the, you know, the feels of a family, re of a fun family reunion. Um, but everybody was a little more relaxed because everybody was a little more confident in their work, in their self and their work. And um, you know their their little their own personal journeys as artists. Um, so it actually, um, I think, also filming in Darwin definitely lent itself to the laid back nature of <laughs> vibe around the around the shoot. Um, it was a joy. It was a total joy, which is exactly what you need when you're filming a rom com. <laughs> yeah, I totally didn't even really think about it from that perspective. But of course, you have a decade's worth of experience now compared to, you know, when you're starting out in the Sapphires, it was a breakthrough moment for so many of you. And then in that decade, not only have you grown as an actress and gone on to do a lot of different roles, but you're also an award winning playwright and director and you're bringing all of that experience to the set as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. It was kind of like, I mean, yeah, obviously Sapphires was Wayne's first feature film as a director and, and both Miranda and I, our first feature film as actors. And um, it was really evident, I suppose, in like the, the way, the times that I noticed it most were like the, you know, like Wayne just kind of coming up and being like, hey, do you want to just improvise something in this scene? Like just improvise a couple of lines. And he wouldn't have said that to me 10 years ago. And if he had, I would have said absolutely not 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but this time around, or, you know, eight years later, um, we were both like, yeah, yeah. Like we just found little pockets of joy and, and um, you know, a, re a really relaxed way to create something really beautiful, which was lovely. Yeah, I feel like that really comes across as an audience member. And the first time I saw Top End Wedding, I was really reminded of films like Taika Waititi's Boy, for instance, which has these laugh out loud moments, obviously, but also tackles some really heady stuff. And in the case of Top End Wedding, it's like very clearly a rom-com, but it's also this incredibly nuanced and complicated examination of racial identity in Australia and you know what it means to grow up biracial. Do you think it's a bit of a misconception that I guess enjoyable films can't be as important as, you know, a three hour black and white Russian drama and vice versa? <laughs> I think it's the biggest misconception. I think, um, you know, I, like I know actually Taika has said previously, it's really easy to make someone cry, but it's really hard to make someone laugh. Um, and I think when you laugh with someone, you actually, you know, when you're in an audience, um, I mean, in real life, everywhere, when you share a moment of, of humor, amusement, and you have a little laugh next to somebody you don't know, you're suddenly kind of a little more open to each other's experience and you find yourself being a little more empathetic to each other's situation, I think. So to use that as a tool to kind of break down people's walls and barriers in a really lovely, humorous, comical, but gentle way is such a powerful device for storytelling to get these, you know, major themes across, but also let people, like people feel safe and, and seen and supported. And, you know, it's just so lovely to have a giggle. Like, um, I think we, my first experience of that really was with uh, our other bestie, Nakia Louie, um, doing her play Black is a New White, which was, so Miranda's written the first screen, Aboriginal screen rom-com and Nakia's written the first stage rom-com, Aboriginal stage rom-com. And it was just both experiences were so completely um, new to me, at new terrain in actually also as actors, being able to walk out 
of a cinema or being able to walk out on stage and feel instinctively warmed to by the audience as opposed to a majority non, non-Aboriginal audience feeling like they're getting ready to receive some pain and trauma. And it's like, we don't, that's not all our lives are. Like our lives are joyous and celebratory and beautiful and hilarious and bright. And that's what we want to hand over as well you know, as the black, like that's all a part of the black experience as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's, I think it's the start of a really exciting time in Aboriginal film. One of my favourite elements of the film is how uniquely and specifically Australian it feels as well. But it did also have its world premiere at Sundance, which is a huge international film festival, one of the most prestigious in the world. And there used to sort of be this belief that for Australian films to succeed internationally, they had to sand off their edges, sand off the things that made them Australian. And I don't necessarily feel like that's the case anymore. You're also a writer, like you work behind the scenes as well. You're a director and you're someone that's in front of the camera. When you're crafting stories, How important do you feel like it is to fight for those very specific aspects of a story that also can make their appeal universal? Incredibly. I think um, I come from a major, major, you know, theatre stage background. And we import, by nature, theatre around the world imports. I mean, Australia specifically, we import a lot of American plays or British plays or, you know, and you're constantly going like, why is this play... Why does it have an audience here in Australia? And I think the best, I learned very early on that the the most universal stories are the most specific stories. They're the most, um, you know, the ones that hone in on on the micro details of that life experience. That's where we find universal humanity, I think. And I think the first person really to kind of tackle, like to be able to do that on a grand scale was, was Taika, you know, something like, boy, you kind of like, hmm, how did this story about a young Māori boy reach everyone in the world and grab at their heart and, and you know, um, make them sit up and pay attention. And I think... Unless you have people understanding what Poye is. Yes. With Thriller, you know. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> It's like, uh, yeah, so I think, um, I think though also like it felt like whilst the rest of us, perhaps Australian films were being asked to sand down the edges, the unique thing about being Aboriginal artists is that that is what global audiences want mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, they want stories about, you know, when somebody says it's an Aboriginal experience, it's an Aboriginal story, they have an idea of what they expect. So it's almost like in a weird way you're expected to be more Aboriginal or the most Aboriginal. (laughs) Um, And that's what I love about Top and Wedding was it it took this really, really formulaic, you know, so well-known structure of a rom-com. And actually for me, the real story, the real love story in that film is the mother and daughter. And yeah, (laughs) and that is, that speaks to the, like the Aboriginal experience of the matriarch and the identity politics, the, the, you know, the, the themes of identity running through it. Um, so yeah, it's quite funny. There's this, we're in this funny little time, I think as Aboriginal creatives where, uh, you know, it, it gone, I think, yeah, like you said, gone are the days of kind of sanding down the edges. It's like, no, we've been um, persistent in, in maintaining our specificity to our experience as Aboriginal people. And Australia is like, the, the world has really loved a lot of the content that we've given them. You know, like you look at, I mean, if Warwick Thornton was asked to make Samson and Delilah anything less than it was, you know, completely different film, completely different reception the world over. So I think we've had a really great um, couple of decades of Aboriginal film leaders showing us like you don't have to sacrifice anything about your experience and bringing it to the screen. In fact, bring all of it and bring more of it um, and it'll be it'll be just as well received or more more well more widely received because people, you know, I think when you try and write about love or grief or, you know, vague concepts, you lose, you lose the, um, the details and the nuance of, of what makes us human. So I think that, yeah, when you hone in on those specifically and you just write from yourself, it just makes it more, more widely accessible. Yeah, I, I love what you mentioned about the the matriarchal aspects of it because that was what really touched me as well. Not just the first time I saw it, but the fifth and the sixth and the seventh. Like, <laughs> movie, okay, like I'm programming it for a reason. But 
Also, I think about some of my favorite rom-coms, particularly modern rom-coms, right? And I think of Someone Great, which was a Netflix original, but that was a rom-com where it wasn't necessarily about the heterosexual relationship. It was about the bond between these three women and their friendship. Yeah, and actually, like, my girl, my girl wrote that. Jen yeah, Taylor Jen Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh my god, I love that you bring that up because exactly, I watched it and I was like, oh, this is totally not about him at all, like him and her. This is about these three women and it's about this one woman like her relationship to herself and doing what she needs to do yeah and that point when you're like hitting 30 you're on that satin return, yep. right you're starting to examine where you are in life and where things are progressing and and what you value and what's important to you and the things that you have to give up to succeed which makes me really excited because i think that's a very like great evolution of the form and evolution of the rom-com but I, I do want to touch on something that you said earlier about um you know people in in some perspectives only wanting to see aboriginal trauma or some version of aboriginal suffering on camera but you know rom-coms traditionally have been very straight and very white and i wanted to know how important you felt like it was to see those marginalized voice, voices, people of color, queer people, disabled people in the rom-com space as well, getting to tell stories that are joyful and a joyful version of the Aboriginal experience. It, it just makes sense to me. It's like, I feel like we've been for so long pushing our pain and grief and trauma to the front of the stage. And it's quite funny, it, that it happened after Sapphires and it happened again after Top End Wedding where people would come up to me and be like, that was really funny. But oh, you guys are really funny. Like shocked that Aboriginal people have a sense of humour. And I'm like, babe, that's what trauma does. It makes you hilarious. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, um, it's just, I don't know. I feel like when the more stories, the more diverse stories I see that deal with a range of experiences from that community that aren't just you know, trauma porn. Um, I, the more angry I get that we've been rift, ripped off from it so far, like, I'm just, you know, like, oh my God, give me a spin off with Foxy from Top End Wedding. Like, oh, give me that spin off that. immediately. Give like, that's, that's a life. Let him go on a road trip of self discovery. Like, I um, want it. <laughs> oh my God. Like, like, just the 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 wealth of joy and um you know discovery about your identity and things like that i just go like wow I, there's hours upon hours of, of story in there that i would subscribe to in a heartbeat um <laughs> so i think yeah it's just it's just really lovely and i kind of go if you're cutting yourself off from the idea of if you're cutting yourself off from joy because the people on the on the you know on the thumbnail or the poster don't fit your description of what you think happiness looks like or or what you think aboriginality looks like then you're doing yourself a really huge disservice and and what a boring life to live um so i'm like I'm, i just think i'm here for all of it I, I you know like i said i did say did say earlier to you in private that i actually hate rom-coms and i hate oh, I've got a question about that coming up <laughs> you worry <laughs> But I will absolutely, but you know, that then comes down to like, oh my God, I will, I have watched Top End Wedding three times. Like I will absolutely watch someone great. I watched twice. Like I will watch the shit out of movies that show me a different experience to what I've already seen a hundred times on screen. Like, yeah. And I think yeah. a great film will cut through regardless of the genre, you know, regardless of the medium in many ways. Totally. Um, I do want to ask, I'll get to the rom-com question in a minute, but <laughs> I was, I was really curious because like one of the staples of rom-coms is a dance scene, right? Like a, oh a my God. moment <laughs> and Top End Wedding has an amazing one and in a great cameo from Electric Fields who are just absolutely like one of the best acts out there, but also the end credits of Top End Wedding, Don't Don't You Worry plays over the top of the end credits. And I just had Don't You Worry in my head for like minimum six to seven months after this right. film. No all way to live. <laughs> but I wanted to know about that dance scene. Um, how long did it take to get the choreo down? Uh, how many takes did it get? And then when you nailed it, did you feel like Jenna Jackson? These are the important oh hard-hitting questions. These are the important hard-hitting questions. 
that dance scene, we had um, we had a day to learn it. We had like I think it was like six hours or maybe yeah, it was a day. <laughs> Someone's gonna come out and be like, Shay, we had three, stop lying. Um, no, from memory, we only had a day to learn it because we had the choreographer fly down, Benny Gratz, who was also miscellaneous, who was one of the founding members of the um, um, uh, Miss First Nations Ultimate Drag Crown, yeah. uh, which I think is happening in Mel in Nam at the moment at Yerimboy. Um, so we had miscellaneous come in and choreograph it with Leanne Scott, who were two Darwin mob. And they flew to Adelaide and we sat in a sweaty room for five, six hours just going, oh my God, it's so fast. <laughs> and even they were like, oh, it is much faster than we, we put a lot more moves in here than we realise. <laughs> um, but my favourite story about the dance scene is actually us needing to get, like Miranda needing to get permission from Miss Janet. Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Um, Miranda needed to get permission. She, they applied. They were rejected. And so Miranda wrote a letter pleading with Janet to let her use the film for all the reasons why she loved it. And, you know, it was very much her, her confessing that her whole life she had envisioned herself making a rom-com. All she wanted to do was make a rom-com and all she wanted to do was dance to a Janet Jackson number. And um, Janet read the letter and we got permission to use, to use, um, oh my God, what song is it? That's so escapade, cool. escapade. Escapade. We got permission to use Escapade because, and so Miranda was just scre screaming around the set like, Janet read my words. I was like, I know, babe. <laughs> You'll see your dance yeah. too, most likely. <laughs> and then, then the, like, the added layer of performing it in Darwin's iconic gay nightclub throb. Um, Which as well is a Janet Jackson song, if nobody is familiar. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we got to perform it. It was insane. It was, there was I, like, my biggest thing was that there was too much time between day rehearsal and the day we shot it. Mm. Um, I was a little angry, like, at, you know, at myself for not being as prepared as I should have been. Um, but you do like, you just kind of can't help it. It's also, can I say, it's very weird to film nightclub scenes when you're like the only ones allowed to dance and everyone's watching you. I'm like, this is not in my genetic makeup at all to be this person but you just got to pull it out and look like you're having the best fun of your life and then it becomes the best fun of your life you know fake it till you make it um it was it was a dream like honestly to to be able to say yeah we shot a, a janet jackson choreographed dance piece in throb for a rom-com film is something i never thought would be on my top 10 moments in life <laughs> <laughs> it is such a great scene and i love all that added detail to it now. So every time I watch that, I'm just going to be thinking about Janet <laughs> Jackson essentially endorsing it, right? Like we can. Yeah, uh, exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. Now you, we did, you did mention that you're not the biggest fan of rom-coms in general as a genre and that you like older targeted rom-coms where the characters tend to be in their fifties and sixties. So I wanted to know what is your favorite rom-com? Do you, do you have one that you go back to a lot or one that you really connect with? Yeah. Um, do you know, I actually, I really, I do love it's complicated with Meryl Streep. I was, was like, going to say that you got it. It's, Meryl, come it's on. like, I mean, it's, it's just perfection. Um, the scene where like all I want also every time I think about it is like lavender ice cream. I'm like, I know I'd hate it, but I want it so bad. No, it sounds like <laughs> incense. Honestly, I think incense is terrible. Lavender is <laughs> not a flavor guys. It's a scent. It's a scent. So true. Um, but it's complicated. Actually though, I think another rom-com that I really, really loved recently was Someone Great and also Love, Simon. Mm. I really, really was like, oh, here's representation that, you know, that I haven't seen and I watched it with my best friend who's a gay boy and we were like oh, just crying and holding each other going where's the aboriginal one now like we want a young <laughs> aboriginal queer rom-com give it to us um so those would be yeah uh 10 things I, I mean you can't go past 10 things I hate about you ever in life um that would be something that I I do love going back to I go back to, I've, I've actually funnily enough gone back to she's all that more times than I thought I would mm as an adult it actually um, holds up surprisingly well like it, <laughs> i really i think of that era of 90s team rom-coms yeah hardly wait hasn't aged super great things like get over yeah. it stuff. <laughs> it's pretty yeesh but she's all that holds up surprisingly well yeah but i do i also love every queen latifah rom-com mm. like 
I just, um, is it Mr. Right now? With Common? Who's the teacher in Common? Yes. yes he's the well, boss. She's a sports physio. I'm like, how did they turn a sports physio story into a rom-com? Like, it's, it's a great, it's like love and basketball, but like yes, make, yeah. make it fresh here. And you know, that's fun. I enjoy a little Absolutely. Bit. Totally. So I'm like, that's actually one of my, that's one of my top, top rom-com movies for that. sure. I just rewatched um, that recently, actually, because I was going on, I was watching Bringing Down the House as well with Steve Martin. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Classic. I also wonder if you could actually technically classify my money as a rom-com. Well, you definitely can't classify Set It Off as a, as a rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> but I Absolutely. want to. In my heart of hearts, I want to. In my heart of hearts. Yeah. It's a love story between them and crime, you know? You know, it's a love story between women and Monday. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Top End Wedding and for, for diving deep into the nuances of <laughs> romantic comedies. I appreciate it so much. My pleasure.